On May 14, 1997, five airlines came together to form a new airline network called Star Alliance. The alliance called itself the Airline Network for Earth, supported by the fact that these five airlines came from three different continents. These five founding members consisted of Air Canada, United Airlines, Lufthansa, Thai Airways, and Scandinavian Airlines. Fast forward 27 years later and Scandinavian Airlines has officially exited the alliance it helped create. Today we will analyze the transition that SAS has made from Star Alliance to SkyTeam and see what benefits it will bring for the carrier and its customers in the future. Last year, in October 2023, Scandinavian Airlines suddenly announced its imminent departure from Star Alliance, a topic I covered right around that time. This move caught many, including myself, by surprise, but the truth was that SAS had constantly been struggling financially. As part of SAS Group's restructuring, the government of Denmark, two investment firms, and Air France KLM would become stakeholders in the group. Air France KLM would control a 19.9% stake and it was this move that hinted at Scandinavian Airlines coming closer to leaving Star Alliance. By March of 2024, the US Bankruptcy Court approved this new restructuring plan which eventually allowed SAS to exit Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. By April 29th, SAS confirmed it would exit Star Alliance on August 31st and enter SkyTeam the following day. The European Commission approved the restructuring on June 28th. So now it's September 2nd. Scandinavian Airlines is officially a SkyTeam member, closing 27 years in the Star Alliance. With $1.2 billion in new investments, the airline has emerged from bankruptcy proceedings in what CEO Anko van der Werf calls a new era for the airline. He noted that the carrier is in a much stronger position with lower debt and lower costs. In fact, July 2024 was the most profitable month in the airline's history, very encouraging to hear for an airline that has struggled financially for so many years. So now that SAS is part of SkyTeam, what does that mean for loyal customers who have flown the airline for many years and gained benefits with its Star Alliance partners? Well, in official statements released by both SAS and SkyTeam, SAS Eurobonus members will immediately enjoy benefits across SkyTeam partner airlines with silver members being recognized as SkyTeam Elite and gold and diamond members being Elite Plus. They will be able to access perks like airport lounges and Sky Priority services. SAS joining SkyTeam now aligns it with partner carriers like Delta, Air France, Aeromexico, KLM, Korean Air, and so many others. Customers can benefit from easy connectivity across over a thousand destinations worldwide. Now, speaking of destinations, a massive speculation when SCS announced its departure from Star Alliance was how it would shift its route network to reflect this change. When we look at the US, I remember mentioning that SCS would likely cut services to large United Airlines hubs and then launch services to Delta hubs. Before leaving Star Alliance, SCS operated flights to the following US airports. Five of these are official Star Alliance hub airports thanks to United Airlines, and two of them, Newark and Washington Dulles, are dominated by United and Star Alliance. SAS hasn't cut any of these cities just yet, nor have they disclosed any plans to do so. However, SAS added a new US destination back in June, reflecting its eventual shift to SkyTeam. Service between Copenhagen and Atlanta launched on June 17th and has been running daily before eventually decreasing to five weekly flights in the winter. Looking at the other current US destinations, JFK, LAX, and Boston are the only ones with large Delta presences. You could also argue Chicago O'Hare is up there too, given Delta controls a significant part of Terminal 5 as well. So right now it's kind of hard to tell what SAS plans to do with its US network. I can see them leaving Newark and shifting their Oslo and Stockholm flights to JFK, but that would be hard given how slot restricted that airport is. And fun fact, Newark is SAS's only US gateway with service to all three of its hubs, Oslo, Copenhagen, and Stockholm, so while it would be unfortunate to see this go, it's anyone's guess what SAS will decide because staying in those big star alliance hubs like Newark and Dulles don't seem like great ideas, at least in my view. With SAS now joining Star Alliance, I'm eager to see them expand their reach into the US, if that wasn't obvious already. 
As far as wide-body aircraft go, the carrier has one A330-300 and two A350-900s on order, so hopefully we could see the airline announce more US routes once these planes come in. Some cool examples could be relaunching service to Seattle and adding new services to Minneapolis and Detroit. Given that Aeromexico is also a SkyTeam member, well, maybe we'll see new service to Mexico City coming soon too, which would be great because SAS has never served Mexico before. Now, SAS passengers have undoubtedly lost out on a decent amount of global connectivity with the carrier leaving Star Alliance. And that's because Star Alliance is home to global powerhouses like Turkish Airlines, who serve the most destinations of any airline, and Ethiopian Airlines, who continue to grow rapidly and have the largest network throughout the continent of Africa. But of course, the main concern for SAS and its administration was the airline being in good financial health, and the move over to SkyTeam is giving them just that. Let me know what you think of SAS transitioning to SkyTeam and what changes you expect in the future. As always, thank you very much for watching, and until I see you next time, take care and goodbye.